Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? <laughs> it's episode 105. We are talking about everything that uh, everyone has been working on, what you've been working on. But before we get started, we are going to hit the slides. Can you guys see those? Are they beautiful? Are they wonderful? Perfect. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start this episode of Logic Live is brought to you by AJA. They make the best video hardware in the business and have been an essential part of Flame since 2006. For more information about their pro video solutions, check out AJA.com. And a huge Logic welcome to our newest sponsor, Hotspring. The future of VFX outsourcing, Hotspring, connects you to the great artists to get your projects done, making it easier than ever to access the best talent around the world. So check them out at the hotspring.com. And if you're in the market for any Boris FX plugins, please use the Logic code and save yourself 15% on any of their products at checkout uh, or subscription when you use the code Logic-2022. Yeah, and it's still 2022, by the way. And check out the Logic merch store. Look your best while you make your best. You can get all this amazing swag at logic.tv. Just click on the merch button at the top. And we want to thank all of our patrons. Subscribe on Patreon. You are very much appreciated. We cannot do here what we do at Logic without your support. Check it out. We've got 152 patrons as of this week. Keeps growing. Thank you, guys. And if you'd like to support what we're doing here on Logic, get yourself some exclusive content like the post Q&A with our guest and also some merch. Head on over to patreon.com slash logic TV or logic TV and support what we're doing for as little as five bucks a month. The logic forum is where in the community we go to ask and answer questions and just hang out with other awesome flame artists. And here we go. We got some stats coming in for 2023. Look at this. Amazing. 606 users on Discord. We love you guys. You can sign up for free at forum.logic.tv and click on the Discord link. Check it out. The challenge coins, they have shipped. They're coming your way. I think we're getting more in the way, so they showcase the program you know and love, as well as the community that you know and love. And a shout out to Glenn Teal. You're awesome, man. Thanks so much for helping us out with the podcast. Um, if you haven't heard of him, Glenn Teal, double N, double E, has been helping, helping us out at Logic by taking the initiative to, to produce the Logic podcast. He's been doing an amazing job getting these underway, and we're releasing new episodes all the time, so go check it out. If anyone has any suggestions for podcast topics or interview subjects, shoot a message over to Glenn on the forum. Glenn Teal, all one word. Always great to have more fresh new content on the podcast. We've got some exciting stuff coming up for Logic Academy. <laughs> new classes for winter 2023. We've got Flames Particle System Part 2, starting off with um, the particle system with Sanan Vernal. He breaks down particles for us in this new video. You guys know him well as he was the second episode ever of Logic Live back in April in 2020. It's absolutely great, so go check it out. Got intro into Max Box Shaders uh, by Graziella. An amazing live event back that was on January 8th on how to write your own matchbox shader. Highly recommend it, so please go check it out. And this is awesome. What is a flame artist? So new YouTube shorts content coming from Austin Campbell. So this is cool. So all of these three are going to join the rest of the series, Connect to Conform, Intro to NDI, all that good stuff. It's going to be uh, free at logic.tv or on youtube.com logic.tv. We also want to thank Autodesk for sponsoring these videos. So thank you. And speaking of Flame, 2023.3 became available for download. So go ahead and upgrade. There's some solid new features with the animation editor, bug fixes. So upgrade today. And that does it for the slides. Hello, we're back. <laughs> so how is everyone doing today? We want to talk about like, what have you guys been working on? What you've been up to? all that good stuff so so yeah i think it'd be kind of cool to start off like let's see who's like the furthest traveling via zoom <laughs> what do we got john is that is that where you are should we should we start with uh should we start with you uh can we not start with me i just want to yeah, um, think about what on. i say <laughs> <laughs> coming unprepared really you always forget about new zealand why does new zealand always get yeah new zealand's further away no, kind of, sort of, not. Actually, no, maybe not. I'm a little bit closer to LA, aren't I? Anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, like, first, if we're flying uh, this way, like, oh, I guess it depends on which way you'd go. What is it, like 17 hours right. from LA? Something like that? Yeah, something like that. Well, yeah. all right, I'll go I'll go first while John prepares, because the, yeah, the big news in our camp is we upgraded our, all our flames. So all our Linux boxes went up to Rocky, and all our flames went to the latest 2023.3.1. And it was a big leap from us. I think we came from Flame 2020. So we're just trying to 
we, we kind of hit the floor running the new year. We all had jobs, so it wasn't much of an easing in situation. And, you know, it's gone remarkably well. We've got, um, we've got brand new op operating systems, you know, coming from an old CentOS where my browser was really old and all my... Um, Oh my uh, Slack interface was really also yeah I'm I'm pretty pleased with it I'm a little bit stumped with the animation editor at the moment I'm the time to dive into it but it's got a lot of I'd say the biggest amount of changes are in the animation editor and that's what kind of um, has thrown us a little bit but that's all right I'm not saying it's bad I'm just saying I'm just not I wasn't prepared for it I think you know only uh, watching watching videos isn't, isn't necessarily the preparation the best preparation I think I should have probably had a a week or so, just a bit of practice before I got put in front of clients. That's all right. They didn't notice. So yeah, the so fire, did, man. Uh, Isn't that how we usually learn? Throw the fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly right. Yeah, it's just that I, it I, it's been a while since I felt that uncomfortable and unprepared. So the smugness like drained out of my face as I was like, "Oh my god, why is, what's this?" You know, like ah, <laughs> trying to move stuff around. It's uh, yeah, it's been a distant feeling. It's good, good for the, you know, good for the soul to to just have that occasionally. So that was that. That totally um, works. Yeah. Did you have any pain points with the move to the different operating system or was it pretty seamless? Well, um, the biggest problem was out of our hands, but it was uh, suddenly all our permissions were out of whack. I, I don't know what it's, it's either clamp it or your permissions. That's, that's the, usually my two go-to problems that, are, um, so yeah, mainly it was boring it kind of stuff that, that I couldn't delete stuff that I wrote and all my open clips that I'd created last year were locked so i couldn't actually append any of my open clips i just had to clear them all out and start again so oh my god I'm still i'm still suffering a little bit from lingering permissions we're going to have to try and see what's going on because the other thing we all did was move to um active directory which is everyone signs into the flame as their own user so whereas before i was like flexing my muscles as admin um you know everywhere i went now i'm just a, a lowly pleb and uh yeah i have way less permissions than i really probably should have so that was the biggest thing but everything yeah really smoothly all our all our um custom python scripts all kind of came in and and worked quite well it could have been it could have been a lot worse we're running reasonably old uh linux hardware so we were a little bit nervous you know we've done as much testing as you can but until you really roll, roll it out you're mm -hmm. never really you're never really sure but yeah no everyone's pretty pleased which is good because it was my i pushed i pushed for the upgrade so if it was terrible i'd be the one on the firing line you know <laughs> Nice. That's good, though. Hey, John, did you think of something? Yeah, well, I kind of <laughs> had the same sort of week, kind of, sort of. Um, yeah, I'm, what you got? I had a quiet week last week, work-wise, but I thought get stuck into the IT side and archive and upgrades. There's minor upgrade I had to do during the week. Um, what happened? Oh, you yeah, had a permissions issue as well. <laughs> you know, you always fall into one of those uh, where Flame was just running really, really, really slow and it, turned out to be um wasn't connecting to my nas by 10 gig i was connecting by one gig and i was trying to uh, update some proxies that i needed to do a week for a job that's being revised next week um then what else did i do this then just prepping just moving five terabytes of data off my system so i could get ready for a, a crazy crazy february i feel it's Gonna go crazy on me on February. I've got multiple people ringing me all on the same day, and I'm gonna try and pretend I can do it all and juggle it. And I know, I know these jobs they can move around a bit, you know, and it might be a couple of double shifts. But yeah, we'll get there. It's uh, what else? What, what, I don't know if I'm allowed to say what sort of jobs I'm doing. Oh, a couple of corporates. I've got 22 educational videos to pump out in three days. Um. What are the what are like the lengths of some of those? Um, a lot of them are two minutes. Um, some of them are four minutes, I think. But I won't be cutting them. They're just going to hand me a bunch of EDLs, uh, XMLs, and I'll just be grading them and finishing them, putting some servers and graphics, and just polishing them up. Um, what else will I be doing? I've got. This other job, actually, yeah, I'm going to ask the group later and when it happens. I'm going to take a brief on it next week. I've got to do this um, job where some talent in the studio and they want to project images on their faces. And we're not sure whether we're going to 
get projectors and project images on in the in the shoot. I'm saying no because I won't have any control of the images that are going to hit the faces and the exposures and all that jazz. So just trying to work out how we go about doing that sort of thing. Um, and there's going to be like close-ups, camera moves around people in, in a studio, just standing in a studio, staring into nowhere. And images are just going to be changing on their faces and images are going to be hitting the wall on the back of them in the studio on the psych and all that sort of stuff. So chroma key number. Um, yeah. When it's, I think of that, I think of David Kreitz and all the exciting installation projector work that you've done. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> that's a segue <laughs> over to David. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Well, no. <laughs> Thanks for doing that for me. <laughs> well, that sounds like a little bit of a nightmare, John. It sounds like you got uh, your work cut out for you for sure. Um, yeah, um, as far as projecting stuff here, I've been kind of working on uh, the end of the uh, Gandhi Museum stuff that I was working on before. This uh, The theater um, is what we've just finished up, which is really cool. Um, the, the projection surface is um, scrims. There's... Uh, a center scrim panel and then two that are uh, flanking that kind of angle out towards you a little and they're on different depths and then there's these rods that come down that are this is for Mahatma Gandhi and his part of his philosophy is all of the, what he did with um, the spinning wheel the chakra back in the back in the day he, that's how the Indian independence movement kind of developed um, the power of all of this stuff against the British you know colonizers at the time so Anyway, these poles come down. I mean, if I could share the screen, I could show you what it is. But it's a, it's a, um, uh, they're rods that are made to look like these threads, and, it, and we're projecting on those as well. So it breaks up the image um, in really interesting way. It comes across that kind of thing. So obviously, like text and that kind of thing, at certain sizes don't work. Really big, huge text that goes across the entire thing works well. Um, but it's it's really uh, fascinating what happens with some of the blow through and. Also, um, the uh, things coming across this entire thing because of all the different depths and the way that the scrims let light uh, blow through the back surfaces, uh, it uh, really creates a really interesting um, kind of uh, just a very, very three-dimensional thing out of a, out of a two-dimensional image coming at it. So um, getting, getting done with that, going to have to go on site to tune it in. And those, I think I'd showed it earlier on, those other uh, sculpture things that we're doing, which are on those long, tall, like 17 foot tall, uh, <clears throat> semi-circular uh, fabric pieces. And so those are all done too. So I'll go on site and tweak all that in. Uh, I think I'm not going to go until May because we're doing all the installation of all the place for it as well. We're building walls, all the exhibitry, the company I work for, builds all of that stuff as well you know so it which is great because we built the thing full scale here <laughs> and i was able to edit actually edit on the final screen and everything so it'll i'll go on site and have very little tweaking to do whereas if it had been traditionally going on site uh it could take you know it takes a lot more time having to tune everything this way it's just going to be like small tweaks of things you know when i get there so that's what i'm doing i'm that, so glad that 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 a, you're you're in our community because it's such a i, I have to I would insist that it's so different from what everything else, everyone else is doing. Cause I'm doing some commercial stuff. That's like, you know, I had a really long project. It was two months, but yours is like years. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes they do. I mean, we've been working on this one for six months, you know, something like that. And uh, it'd be done now moving on to some other things until the installation comes. But I did have a meltdown though, a flame meltdown this uh related to all this. And if I wasn't so anal about <laughs> data and everything, I'd really be in probably a, in some trouble i have the main theater piece i'm talking about <clears throat> i did i've got my main flame in in another room but we i we set this up so i had an imac pro that i used that was uh, running as a separate flame to do this theater piece on and i run two ssds one is a flame frame store and one is a source thing so they uh, it gives me nice fast it's interactive works great well um i archived everything uh, before Christmas because we you know, left everything, came up, which is a really good idea. I took those drives and was doing some work on my laptop and different frame, didn't use the same folders or anything, just kept it all separate, was doing some work in flames. So I went back, hooked them back up because I was going to go back to work in there. And it uh, when I opened the theater up, it sat on, uh, you know, volume, uh, initializing volume, you know, looking at the, for like 30 seconds when it usually goes for like four or five seconds when it came up. 
Um, all the stuff was on the frame store, flame saw, but it lost the links to everything that was on the source drive. Um, so, you know, my whole, most of my sequence was all checkerboard, you know, and everything else. It's like, <laughs> how and like nothing changed about it. I mean, it's literally just two different times, you know, opening the, opening the same project, you know, and with the same wow. drives, literally. So it was, you know, like I say, fortunately I had it, uh, had an archive and I'd already checked the archive and opened it up on my laptop. It's my laptop. So I'm going to take to Houston to do the final work. So, I mean, I, I'd, I'd already kind of started moving things. So I, I didn't freak out when, <laughs> when it happened. I, mean, I, I would have had it back if anyway. Pardon were, the, were the paths all the same in when you all clicked on the clips? <laughs> It was the same, yeah, oh yeah, the same drives. I when mean, you it clicked said on the clips, click on the clips. Had that use... Similar situation where all of you know, you might have just gone through a reboot of the machine, and then you go into that project, and then everything's unlinked, and you think, "What's going on here?" You know, it's the same project. And what I found, believe it or not, was you go into security and privacy, and one of those items in there gets itself unticked. The mm. IFFS thing. Oh, look. I'll look because it's it's it shouldn't have you know because I've done nothing with system software yeah, or anything, I did nothing. Or anything but magically just unticks no, itself. It's, that's happened to me too. It's everything well, that's good is to know. In systems, um, yeah, in security. That's awesome. That's awesome, John. I hope that's the case because it'd be nice be, to be able to have you that. Know, just turn well, that I'll, back I'll on and then everything relinks again because it just loses its uh, ability to uh, mm -hmm. to get full permission to that drive. Mm -hmm. That's that. I'll check it out tomorrow, man. I, thanks for the mm -hmm. tip. Okay. Yeah. I hope we solved all your problems. That would be amazing. <laughs> Keep us in the loop. <laughs> Let us know. That ain't, that ain't close to all my problems. Yeah, I want a t-shirt that says, solve all your problems with just a tick box. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if only. Andy. Yeah, I just noticed that. Ooh, what's going on here? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Michael Landon, how are you doing? Hello there. I haven't talked to you in a while. How are you? What's going on with you? Yeah, it's been a bit, huh? Yeah, yeah. I went to Atlanta. You went to Atlanta. I came back. It's like, ah, yeah. what's going on? I know. We missed each other by that much. <laughs> we did. I think by a week. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> what's going on with you, man? What are you working on? Other than the usual, you know, car commercials and, and you know, fried food, fast food commercials uh, yes. that, we, that we do out here. <laughs> I just finished up a bunch of... Uh, spots for our MailChimp that was supposed to be, you know, just simple rebuild, do some, do some new screen comps and ended up, you know, they were complete re-edits where, you know, they didn't factor in the fact we had to, you know, do all, redo all the, the cleanup work and everything. And, and the, the, the screen comps were these crazy moves with, uh, with, with, with really bad reflections. So like Mocha wouldn't track it, planar tracker wouldn't track it, nothing would track it. Finally, I, I I have the the biggest um, love for perspective grids with with four point tracking in the perspective grid, so you can so you can manually do it. You know that's, that was the only way I could, I can make it work. Oh wow! There's um, I've, I've been talking to Mark Larue, and um, there's actually a podcast just done with him that Glenn did, but he talks about how he's doing like 3d shapes tracking. He's got this whole process. He started to explain it to me. Uh, my brain kind of blew up a little bit and I was like, we're going to save this for a logic live. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, maybe there's some things that might be able to help you out from there, like some tips yeah, and maybe. tricks, but, or yeah. maybe just give them a call. It ended up working. It just took forever. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, you know, all of your go-tos just don't work. Oh, well, yeah. I'll just crank down the, the, uh, you know, I'll make it black and white and make it really crispy. So something like that wouldn't work because, because no matter what I did, there was some stupid reflection that went right through the screen or they were, or they were, they were Panning in such a way where you couldn't, where it couldn't lock on. Uh, I was then I was like, wait a minute, I can do I can do point tracking in the uh, in the perspective grid, and I can see all the little lines on the perspective grid, so I can make it. I can, I can do tweaks. That worked out great. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. It only took like you know ten hours to figure it out, but you know. <laughs> yeah, what's time, right? Exactly. This is construct, exactly. <laughs> right? We we don't need time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That, that's really the big one. Now we're a, um, a little slow, but I think we're going to be ramping up on this other hospital thing that there. They want to do these weird projections and they don't want to do it the way I recommended doing it, but they still want me to go down and do uh, supervision on it. So I think they just want someone as a scapegoat when it doesn't work. It's going to be fun. 
<laughs> you just got a thumbs up from Andy Milkis over there, <laughs> and just, which just joined. And Nick Smith joined as well. That's awesome. Hey guys. Nice. Hey Nick. Let's see here. Who can I? Who can, oh, Wayne Shepherd. How are you doing? What's going I'm on? Good. How are you? <laughs> so where where are you from? Actually, I'm in Redondo Beach, LA. Nice, nice. Yeah. Not too far away. I like it. What, what have you been working yeah. on lately? Uh, I've had uh, MB working for me, who I know you know. Oh, she's amazing. And, oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yes. Okay. She's told me about that. That's great. Yeah, we just wrapped a HBO show called The White House Plumbers, which we've been working on for over a year. My we wife is that. in that show. I, nice. Right, she told me about that. <laughs> yes. Cool. She's an extra in a... In like a, a tennis, tennis uh, scene, a, a, right. a country club scene. And so when MB said that there was, she didn't have to do any retouch to any of the tennis playing extras at the country <laughs> club scene, then chef's kiss. Yeah, we ended up doing just over 360 shots. Uh, it's a five episode miniseries. And I uh, literally just delivered the last shot last week. So now I've been archiving and I managed to buy a new Mac studio. So I'm getting that all set up. And and then we're on to um, another HBO show called The Righteous Gemstones. So I was hoping one. to have a break in between the two, but it's not looking that way. Nope, it's a great show. <clears throat> Yeah, and you're doing you're doing all that work in uh, in flame, or is it uh, nuke as well? Uh, we're we're strictly flame, um, but you know I don't do shows. Actually, we were the lead on uh, White House Plumbers um, for all the two D stuff. Uh, we don't. I jump into a little bit of three D stuff, um, but I tend to kind of stay away from that stuff. But um, so we're doing a lot of, you know, monitor comps, a lot of reflection cleanups, a lot, a lot of cleanup type stuff. Um, White House plumbers had an unusual amount of split screens for dialogue and action. And their editors were crazy with the retimes and the fluid morphs. And it was just unbelievable. And unusually long shots too, four, five, six hundred frames long. Um, so that one was, uh, was quite a challenge. Some of the split screens were insane. How were you given those time warp metadata shots? <clears throat> um, if we were lucky, they were actually noted on a count sheet. <laughs> if we weren't lucky, then you would just have to eye match it. Um, and they were pretty uniform. Um, the editors, they didn't do a lot of ramps. So it was mostly a set speed oh, that's good. um so there there actually were a few ramps in there but they just didn't care about overlap so we were having to rebuild people and all kinds of stuff for some of these split screens that would just look real simple on a quick time but um once you got into it there was uh lots of overlap to deal with yeah. so. but the, it, offline editors don't tend to notice shadows going across oh. the wrong places and stuff like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, there was quite a few scenes where they were in the car, the reflections on the hood of the car, and, you know, you're trying to split them, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's still a great flame success story, I think, because a lot of the times, at least from from what from my perspective, from my vantage point, there there's a big push for Nuke to handle all that stuff. And so here in Flame successfully knocking out of the park for th over 300 shots is music to my ears. I might mm -hmm. want to pick your brain about a few things. Are you, are you using shot grid to manage that stuff or, or no? No, I just kind of have my own internal uh, management system that I built years ago. Uh, that's just built in numbers. And I start out with my bid. I kind of build it all in my bid. And then I just bring that into production. And, and I usually keep, you know, the team's usually pretty small. This has mostly been just MB and myself. Wow. I think I had three other people that just did a shot here and there. That's um, amazing. Wow. So I end That's up cool. producing and doing as many shots as I can myself. Um, this yeah, I guess when it's on target with your times. I'm sorry? Were you on target with your times? Like when you bid each shot? Uh, you said one hour here, four hours there, six hours there. Were you, you know, I, 
yeah, I kind of just finished doing my uh, end of end of show breakdown, and you know we were pretty close. Um, That's cool. It gets a little nervous at times, especially when I'm hiring other people. Uh, but um, I think we did well. I, this show it, it kept getting pushed. It was originally supposed to come out Mother's Day this past year, um, and HBO kept pushing it and pushing it, and we literally never had a locked cut, never. <laughs> um so uh it, that got a little frustrating kind of going back and forth with oh we've extended these shots or yeah those yeah. two shots that you spent a week on those aren't even in the show anymore and um but bill is <laughs> so it's like okay but, <laughs> you know it's, it's not always about the money <laughs> yeah but at least it was time. like at least they still said bill us you know what i mean it wasn't yeah, just yeah. like right change orders on top of change orders and all that i guess there's some silver lining and, and they let me rebid throughout the show because i you know i was saying look some of these split screens are just insane you know once you get into them and they were good about saying okay we'll send us a new number and we'll we'll work it in that's great it's good and you get to see the shot don't you when you're bidding it's not like a you're not just guessing it you know they say they're going to give you a split screen shot. Can you quote on it? You're like, oh, oh I don't know. You, they show you. You can see it, right? Right. And, you know, sometimes the editors have, have gone pretty far with it. And sometimes they haven't. So, um, you know, like I said, they were pretty good about if oh, this looks different once I got the actual pieces to it. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, overall, I think the show went really well. I hope the show's good. It's been hard to tell without the dialogue and stuff if it's really good or yeah. not I'm, I'm hoping it is <laughs> i hope it didn't suffer from like uh that you know the fact that it kept getting delayed which meant they kept working on it and noodling it and noodling it. and sometimes that makes it better but sometimes that can also like make yeah. it worse yeah. yeah i was worried because that whole uh hbo takeover happened in the middle of this project and the project was in such a weird situation um i was worried that it was going to get canned um but i think they had uh, uh invested so much in the talent that's in it and you know it's justin thoreau and and um woody harrelson and i know woody's one of the main producers on it so i i think we were you know we were pretty secure that it wasn't going to go away and they never said that it was going to but it was just in the back of my mind uh, sure. the possibility of it so has that ever happened to you or i guess to anybody where you're like in the middle of a show and it either gets canned canceled or something it just disappears has that ever happened oh, it happened to yeah. me last week ah <laughs> yeah working on, a, working on a commercial um 60 second to 30 second uh this was that, I don't know if you guys were watching the forums, but I was dealing with a, an adapt from was shot in the States, uh, the main body of the commercial was shot in the States, and then they sent me all the rushes uh, with handles here, and I had to reconform a local version, and they shot some stuff here in Sydney, in Tasmania, I should say, um, and worked that into a cut, and we spent ages on the offline, you know, just rejigging everything and getting it all cut and everything and i think i spent maybe five days offline editing it and then took it into grade took it into finish and they took it off then they sent it off to research and research rejected it and didn't like it and client went okay forget it don't worry about it we're not going to do it do you still like, get what? paid how does that work i don't know if i've ever well, experienced yeah, that like is paid. it in the, is it's it like just, in the contract just, or something uh well you know i've I worked for there's an intermediate, there's the agency. So I'm not dealing okay. directly with clients. So gotcha. The, okay. I don't know if I've, I've never been in that situation. I wouldn't know what to do. It's just <laughs> like, a weird oh. feeling, you know, it's like, yeah. uh, I haven't even sent it off. I haven't even like completely finished it, like put the complete polish on it and master it out and send it off to distribution and all that, you know, and you kind of go, wow, I just spent the last three weeks on this spot and it's not going anywhere. It's not going to happen. And it's, and I haven't even completely finished it, you know? It's almost like, did I do something but, wrong? <laughs> like what? No, yeah, that's yeah. what you do. You feel <laughs> yeah. that. You think, well, Was well, it what me? happened? You know, what's going on? You know, oh, well, no, they, you know, they took it off Sometimes to research, research, got feedback and the client listened to the feedback and said, okay, forget it. We're not going to, 
we'll go with another spot. We'll get a, something. We'll put last year's ad on. That's what they said. We'll put last year's ad on. Even more of a slap in the face. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Well, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, hello to the new people that just joined. We got Renee. What's up? Represent from Detroit. We got Mark Anderson. I think that's all that joined. How you guys doing? What's going on? Hey, Renee, what have you been working on lately? What's going on out there? Oh, I've been busy, but I, I'm on a thing I can't talk about the specifics of. And because it's NDA, I'm not sure what I can say, but I can, uh, it's a global thing. And there's a lot of edits, a lot of fast cuts. Um, we're designing uh, we're designing a look for it. Um, I'm not in charge of color. I'm just doing um, conform and finishing and a lot of cleanup and a lot of versions because it's global. So basically it's a version of a thing with that's shot in a similar way for different markets. So there's different actors. So the same thing needs to happen a lot of times, um, but it's interesting and it's fun and the team is really nice. Um, so it's right up my alley. Um, and then I'm also having a lot of fun doing the, the pro stuff um, for the Logic, Pro Logic TV. Yeah. Um, the professor thing so that's that's cool that's interesting i've given three different talks on um you know how to book work and how to manage your money and how to stay cool as a cucumber um but i'm you know i'm, I'm looking forward to next month doing more of that trying to figure out what people want and what time zone you know works best to try and get more people on the actual calls while it's happening because i think the next stuff i want to do i want to have more people there at the same time rather than watching it later um because it's it's helpful to have kind of more of a hive going on for it um mm -hmm. but yeah i mean i really appreciate everybody who's shown up and it's it's fun to to talk to everybody and also i've been having fun um popping into different channels watching everybody work so it's really helpful um for those of you who know um when you get stuck and you're working alone and you're like, okay, this, this is fine. But then you hop on a channel and you just kind of share a screen with people. It, I forgot, or I just sort of forgot the impact that it can have when you think you're doing fine and you're cruising along and you know your stuff, but then when you're around other people, the camaraderie and the, the, the part that you don't mean to ask the question, but it just comes up in conversation and it just sort of comes up as a top topic. It's like, I didn't even think about doing it like that. Or if you have a question and there's five different ways to do it and everybody's just chit chatting about it. You're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, like you, you forgot what you didn't know and you forgot what you wanted to learn. And it just sort of is really, was really nice. So I really appreciated, you know, being a part of that. So I think we should all make more nice. time to kind of be together in those ways virtually for those of us who are not working in offices. And even when you were, I wasn't around seven different flame artists for a long time. It was one, <laughs> maybe two, but being yeah. like in a facility, yeah. like the last time I had that in real life was like, you know, working at union where you had seven mm -hmm. different bays with different flame artists and you can pop in another bay, but like yeah. just being in a pit with other artists and just kind of working, it was so, it was so nice. It does have its, its advantages. And going back to what you were saying about, helping other people. You actually did a Logic Live uh, a little while ago where you talked about like your own business and getting that kind of stuff started up. Uh, I think that maybe like a year or so ago, if you guys haven't seen that, definitely check it out. It was really good. There's a lot of good info in there. And just on a personal level, you've helped me with some random questions that I've had over the years since I've known you for a while too. So thanks for that. But yeah, definitely you oh, deep dived into a lot of stuff in that logic from a while ago. So yeah, definitely check that out. Yeah. The pro, the pro thing is I'm, I'm hoping to do more of that in there because I, I still have people that call me and they have these deep dives of situations they've gotten themselves into and they just need to talk it out. And I'm like, I've learned through being involved in this logic community that phone a friend isn't always the best way to do it, even though it's a trusting, a trusted person you know to not repeat your problem. At the same time, that's only one person's opinion. And I think if we can create a space that's safe, that we can workshop out an answer, I think that person would get so much more benefit rather than the sage advice of one person's opinion. That person may not be right for your situation. And that may be relevant, but it might be old or it might be not quite right. So if you can 
that if we can create a space that feels safe for all of us to talk about stuff and come to the table with an issue that we all have experienced, you know, whether it's someone being in an uncomfortable situation at work or maybe a client situation where someone might be not quite doing something right, um, you know, without revealing anything. There's just been some situations happening where I'm like, oh, I wish we could just talk to like three other people because I'm not the one, I don't want you to just hear from me. I want you to hear from like four other people because you know yeah, that, that these four other people, anybody you. is gonna be like, yes, dude. You know, like, <laughs> I just feel yeah. like everybody would have stuff to say about it. So I would love to do that kind of thing on point. the pro the pro area because I think we could all get something out of it. So that's my text message. That was that was, that was, Rand, that was Randy calling. Yeah, he Randy said shut up to, to book you for the to book you for your next session. I know. I want to have my Lucy sign. This like psychiatrist is in five seconds. <laughs> But you do make a really anyway. good point, though. Yeah, good, good call. Yeah, all really good points, though. Yeah, Renee, I think you're absolutely right. Like, that's kind of how Josh has structured our department at Assembly. Like, we're on a call all day long, and it sounds a little bit scary, but, and to have, like, three, four, uh, like, three or four flame artists and a couple juniors on the call, where everyone can just constantly ask questions all day long, and we do, right. and we I share screens that. all the time. Man, we get yeah. so much done and we always, we're always learning every yeah. day. We're learning new things from each other. That's actually That's really cool. important to stress. I really want to bring the focus, the juniors. It's so important. All you junior people, please, we value your input because you have the fresh eyes. You know, we have been doing this a long time, the same way. And sometimes it's really scary and difficult and exhausting to learn the new way, but you only know the new way and your fresh perspective and your energy and your enthusiasm of, and your fearfulness, it's a really important and valuable way to learn for us as the geezers, you know, we're like, how do you do this new <laughs> thing? You know, it's, please show us. So you are very valuable and we want your input. So you, you bring funny, up a really you say good the point of, because sorry, good go point. On. I was just going to say, it's a really good point that you bring that up. It's funny you say the juniors, Renee, because uh, I see all of you guys as juniors to me <laughs> in the sense of <laughs> age, right? And uh, just the other day, I didn't know how to do per uh, stabilizing with perspective grid. And uh, Richard came to the rescue and he was just showed me a, a way of doing it all in one action. And it was like, wow, how, how did you do that? That's a fantastic trick. Thank but you, also, Richard. Uh, it goes both ways as well, because then John, I'm watching John and trying to help John. I'm going... All oh, right. How did you get? You click on that blue dot to get into the animation editor, do you? That's great. I didn't even know that was a thing. That's brilliant. You know, like just watching someone else and go. So I think so that's what gets... I mean by sharing screens yeah, yeah, and yeah, you, having yeah, the yeah. opportunity to just thing. watch. Yeah. It's like, what'd you just do there? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also, Jeff, yeah. I have to say again, every time I see you, I think about this. I am so grateful for your connected conform video. <laughs> I watch it. Right. I do them very rarely. And every single time before I do them, I rewatch all three of your videos at double the speed and I watch them a couple of times through because every time I watch them I see something I didn't see before and I'm so glad to have them on my little library where I can pull them out and be like okay because you're so clear and you're so concise and it's structured in a way it's like yeah 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 I just need to know the fast version and you have one of those like it's just it's a gold so I, thank you. I appreciate it and, and I think you should buckle up for next week's logic because Josh Josh and I are going to talk about a nice little combination of connected conform and publishing that yes, we've been using cool. that we yes, please. Buy. Yes, please. I know I've been seeing that on, on so I just my brain, I can't hold anymore, but I want to know about this because <laughs> I know there's another new way to do it. And I just had to completely redo my entire conform because I did Oof. something not quite right. Oh, no. And I'm like, well, I could go down the rabbit hole of relinking everything by hand this way. And I started doing it for half a day and it just was bombing out like stuff was not working i'm like you know what sometimes the pain means you have to start over from scratch and it took me the rest of the day but i'm so set now i'm so glad i started over because it, it really got my head around the footage i Great. learned what i did wrong all is clear so yeah i'm just yeah that's Grateful great it's for great the to community. hear yeah. nice of you to say too thank you <laughs> so keep doing it jeff keep doing those awesome videos <laughs> for sure <laughs> I just want to second what Renee said about the the uh, 
the open call that we've been having. I think we switched him over to Google Meet this past week. It's just great. It's I didn't appreciate how much I missed the socialization while working, you know. And sometimes like hours will go by where everybody's screen will be off, you know, camera will be off, microphone will be muted. Uh and then other times there'll be hours of just someone showing what they're doing or everybody's laughing. I mean, whatever. I mean, there's things to learn, but there's also like a, a, a social aspect that again, I, I didn't really appreciate how much I missed. Is it on Discord? Doing. Where is this happening? Yeah. It's done through Logic Academy Pro, uh, where we have an open you call. You Google Mate. You switch it over to Google Where's Mate. Where's that? Yeah, I've never seen that. <laughs> I've looked in oh, the really? circle and I don't see it either. I don't see oh. the option in my Pro account. Or he's done, uh, well, I'll have to reach out to Randy. Right? Doesn't he usually do them on Friday where he posts like a link for an it open used call? To be on, it used to be through Zoom. Is it switched over to another platform now? Oh, you know what? No, I'm sorry. I guess I'm 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 intertwining it with uh we're actually working on a job together. Oh and that right. job yes. that job we have Google Meet. So but the concept sounds good. So you're just you're just working, you're not, not one person's presenting, everyone's just working, but you're li you're live and open. Yep. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, Randy's been Randy had been having them pro and he didn't have them recently but he had oh, been okay. putting them like i don't know every couple of couple of days he was putting up an, an you know an all day from like 10 to 4 or that's something. right a hangout he just had the channel hangout open. group yeah. a hangout yeah. exactly it's like that so like you know you, it just depends on who you're working with maybe you're having them with the people who are on your job but randy was having them through logic academy mm -hmm. pro i mean that's it's just a way to like have a group of people together you know, for a part of a day or a few hours and just to kind of have what's I think key is having the downtime. So you don't specifically have something that you're doing. You just have your camera on or off and your mic is on or off, but you're just there. And it's kind of yeah. nice to just have, because the, the natural, it's sort of like a water cooler, but like more than that, it's just the natural it's ebb and flow of your work day. And then you don't feel pressure to ask a question right. or to narrate what you're doing. It's just sort of, you're just working, but then someone can just say, wait, wait. And if you're sharing your screen, you know, you might ask a question that four other people on the call might be like that. Mm -hmm. I had no idea I was doing it wrong all this time or whatever. Or you yeah, found out right. a new way, like you were saying, you didn't know to hit the animation blue button, then you get to the animation, like stuff you didn't know, you didn't know. So mm -hmm. that's just, that's the goal right there. Good goal. Yeah, everybody's been good about, uh, again, like they usually keep their camera off or their microphone muted. So we don't have to hear them typing. We don't have to hear the music. We don't have, you know, it's, you're not, it's not, you get all the, you eliminate all of the negatives of working in like one room with other people, <laughs> you know, while having all the mm -hmm. benefits of working with other people. Chewing. So. <laughs> some etiquette, some etiquette has to be uh, drawn up at first, right? Right, exactly. Rules of the road. Right. But speaking of working, Mark Anderson, are you, looks like you're working right now, working hard, <laughs> working on something, <laughs> anything uh, you talk yeah, about? <laughs> yeah, just uh, staring at a different screen. Sorry. Um, oh, no, no, you're good. Yeah, you're good. You look like you're just, working hard. Uh, auto show cleanup. So uh, exciting. Renee's object obliterator, you know, every uh, single camera that uh, somehow reflects in the car, you know, a lot of that stuff. So yeah, just running through that, um, you know, Typical delays. Uh, my color comes in on Monday, but uh, they want it on Wednesday. And there's, I, I went through, I ran through with the producer and I was like, so I see on these two two minute pieces, uh, 86 hours worth of work. So uh, what, what should we do? And, you know, so they're kind of realizing now, like, oh, maybe one person isn't enough. And so everybody's running around grabbing another flame artist and stuff like that. So now we're going to divide up shots and do all that once we get everything on Monday. So, you know, so obviously everybody's connect and form. Thanks very much. It's all uh, all helpful. So. so is that you working for a facility with a bunch of flame, other flames? No, this is it was just supposed to be me uh, working with a place out of Detroit. Uh, Does that, that mean uh, you then lose income because you'll be given less shots? Uh, you know what? I I mean, sh I was only going to work five days anyway. Uh, so uh, okay. the fact that now I don't have to work, uh, I could do a second shift and just work overnight uh, each of those days. But uh, that gets old pretty gets quick, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, there'll be, a, there'll be another video next week that we'll do 
uh, and I'll do the same thing next week. So um, we'll see where I jump oh, into next. Is the season get right? shortchanged? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, going to try and take care of myself, obviously, on this, John, and uh, do. make sure that uh, I get enough <laughs> hours out of you all of it. You look good in front of the client, so that's the bottom line. <laughs> they call you back, you know, and it's really good that you told them a, a gaugeable number. You're like, this is, it's like, instead of saying, oh, it's yeah. a lot of work, I don't know if, you're like, there are this many hours, right? and then you kind of give it back to them, and they can either prioritize, or they can hire more people, or they can yeah. change the deadline, but you just gave them the information that they could actually do something with. Right. And it's always that fun thing of you get brought in like, all right, so we need you to work on this spot or this job. And then, uh, you know, but they've already bid it. And it's like, well, all right, but you have roads that are going by with tons of cracks in them. And hey, what do you know? They want every crack out of that road, you know, so stuff like that is uh, it's going to take some time. It's not like it's going to be just a one button thing. I mean, I'd love to just throw a crack beauty on it and uh, be done, but I don't think that's quite going to do it. So <laughs> you know we'll see we'll see what uh we'll see what works out but yeah so i mean giving them that uh that number and then it's also it's a junior producer that i worked with years ago at another facility and she had bid it out and i guess didn't really realize the amount of hours that might take so um you know so now we know and uh we'll see how it goes you know there's also that whole thing where they play things at the auto show where they need the video by this date so they can put it in the reel so that they can get it up on the screens, which we just found out are all 4K screens. So, you know, it's going to be a giant thing to finish. A two and a half minute video at 4K, it'll be pretty big. So, um, you know, we'll get that out to them and then they can get that up on the screen. But, you know, we'll get it to them by midweek and they can have a version of it that's whip and it's got everything in it that we can get done by then. And then Apparently they need it by Monday, final drop dead. So uh, we'll get it to them all by then. So it's just figuring out that timing at this point. So I'm just sitting here waiting, like, if only I had some footage, I'd be ready to go. You know, the work picture isn't going to be good enough for me to fix all week. So sounds like you got your fun. work cut out for you. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> What's going on, man? That's cool. Hey, it's Mr. Mark Wellington. How are you doing? Me, hey, I'm doing fine. What's going on? I'm working this weekend too. Oh, yay. <laughs> well, uh, recent, you know, like in the last year and a half, switched over to mostly freelance and I've been booked since November. Day after the Monday after Thanksgiving, I've been working for a client. I'm still booked through the end of February. So, but I'm mostly doing commercial work. So stuff. You know, Lay's Potato Chips was the last one. And actually, I got my name in a trade mag, which I wasn't expecting. You know, I'm a freelancer for our company, and they still put me in the trade mag. So that was nice of them. And then, uh, you know, right now I'm in the same situation as Mark, where we were supposed to get everything on a Monday uh, this past Monday, and I didn't get it till Thursday. It's due Monday morning, tomorrow morning. So the client had to make a choice whether they were going to hire me and bring in some more flame artists uh, for the weekend, which they did do. So uh, I just sent off a, an approval right before this call. So we'll see what we get. But it's insane. Eight just, AK footage. Well, just do what Mark said, level. crock beauty. <laughs> just like what Mark said, crock beauty all over it. You'll be fine. Well, this is for an $11,500 <laughs> toilet. I can't tell you who it's for, uh, which company, but... Okay. <laughs> and every little thing on that toilet we had to clean up because they had there no fingerprints, no scratches, no extra reflective surfaces, not you know. And there was one where there's all kinds of crap on it. We had to take it all off. It was crazy. I hope there wasn't all kinds gonna, of crap uh, on that. Yeah, there, I was I'm looking for a pun. Go I'm trying to think of a pun. You know, like, <laughs> At that point, why don't they know? just do it CG? I mean it's a toilet. They do CG right. I mean, right? Honestly, if they should have done it CG. <laughs> if it's scratched, you know, you're just gonna go to the bathroom in it. It isn't like, you know, it's it, it, it uh, anyway. Yeah, it was oh, quite material that writes itself. Thank it doesn't work, it's much. down the drain, you know. <laughs> exactly. It's flush all that money away. It was very flushed after it. Right. Uh, Mark, you can now did... add you can now add 8k toilet retouch to your your resume yes it's right. insane it's, it's a keyword insane. search in linkedin now just so you know toilet that'll retouch. open your 8k toilet retouch reel you know well and I, I don't have... toilet. 
Oh my gosh. Oh and I'm man. I'm trying hey. to figure out who's gonna buy one of these bad boys. It's, Rich it's got a elect- it's got an Alexa built into it and speakers on the side. It talks. Oh, to you say no Alexa. more. Oh, say say no more. <laughs> but it, I'm just saying it has to open before you can use it. It's like this automated you just process. Ask Alexa to play your play your pooping wow. sound, you know, playlist while you're. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why? Alexa, flush. Yeah. Alexa, play <laughs> "Rolling Down the River" by uh, Tina Turner. Sorry. I don't, I don't understand it, but that's okay. I should, I should mute my mic. I'm gonna take the money and run. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Can uh, Can Corey Johnson? Sorry. Can we? Can you top the toilet one? Can we? <laughs> do you have anything sure better than that. Alexa toilet? <laughs> not quite. Um, what was that? You said you're gonna take that. the money and runs. <laughs> wow. Dang. I didn't go that far. I didn't put the S on it. I just put the N. Oh. <laughs> yep. Okay. Hi. Hi, Hi, Corey. <laughs> Hi, Corey. Yeah, I had a. Uh, I think a... we really bottomed out with that one. Yeah. yeah. I, had bit... <laughs> so I had a bit of a busy week. Uh, you know, at the place I'm at, we do a mix of long form and uh, and commercial. I'm mainly commercial though, so I started out with a fast food job and ended up on uh, sort of long over long form spillover after that, and then wrapped up with more packer places, but. Uh, had an interesting shot. Speaking of like Michael had uh, an interesting screen replace. I had one too this week. I had a uh, a curved monitor, which was really fun and ultra wide. Uh, uh, but of course, they only had uh, gray or blue for the middle sort of sixteen nine portion, and then they had an ultra wide insert to go in there. So that kind of eliminated any sort of multiply or you know blend mode to go over top. Uh, and on top of that, there was characters in front of it the whole time. So there was occlusions. So, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun <laughs> and uh, long hair. And everything. Brilliant. Um, but I ended up using a you know, senior artist. So I'm at as an old, uh, you know, goes back to Henry days. We kind of had a good suggestion for uh, for dealing with some of the hair because we had a lot of spill, which was the uh, the wash brush going through and just washing the same color over top and and also I did uh, open splines sort of as g masks for each individual strand of hair in some cases so uh yeah that was an interesting one yeah the wash brush was the henry's pretty much only way to deal with hardcore spill i spent many many hours with the wash brush and the henry it's a good trick it's a very good trick it was very I ask you a question about the ultra wide from... insert. Oh. Yeah. Did you undistort the frame and then plan a track that and then put it back, or did you try and? No, I, I ended up doing a, a one point track off of like the t- one top corner and then just didn't extend it by cubic and sort of manually bent it in to match the shape and then positioned it. So it was Bad a push, in, so there was point. a little bit of twist, but yeah. It worked. Okay. Nice, when you nice. when your one point track's the best you can get, things are pretty bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I learned uh, something last week, the week before, from Josh Lawrence about the the wash brush. Is that you can get the same effect that wash uh, performs if you use the uh, if you add a comp node and use the um, Photoshop transfer mode called color. So That's you just one. make a color a color frame of what you want the color to be, and yeah. then put that over top of your footage with uh, Photoshop color yeah. as the transfer mode, and use a mat. And it was like, oh my god, this! I had no idea. I was gonna, it was great. I was going to mention that, but I'll, I'll take you to the next level then, Andy. So if you uh, use your drag tool and just mm-hmm. drag, therefore you can choose what color you're dragging, and then take your paint and then do the comp blend. So it's actually just taking the color value from your drag and putting it back over the image. So what, are you using the matte off of the drag or what do you? So, so you drag your edges. So your pitch is all uh-huh. fucked up kind of thing, but then cool. you just take, you just steal the color using the comp and the Photoshop blend mode to wash that back over your original picture. So you, you can, you can drag what... but with, but with, uh, with the blend mode of color. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, in, so can, in the paint, in the, uh, yeah, paint yeah. so you yeah. can choose oh, whether you're getting oh. skin tones or hair tones and you can, you can, you can, oh. you can drag, drag so quick. You don't have to color sample. Um, but then because you've, you've warped your image, then you just steal the color 
blend from Photoshop and mix it back over. Just just be but just be careful of that color Photoshop blend mode. It doesn't like linear. So you have to if you if you're oh, stuck okay. in a linear comp, you have to convert it out. Otherwise, you'll end up with some weird um, values. But yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, we just nice. used that. Actually, MB showed me the color mode, color Photoshop mode. We had a tattoo removal, and uh -huh. the tattoo was it was pretty faint, but it was just dark enough to where you could really see it. And she grabbed the color of the skin and washed over that tattooed area and it worked really well oh man i would love oh, to see yeah, that i actually worked oh, on i would love to say that too i want to i worked on I pain and gain that movie with know. mark Wahlberg, and he had that really bad tattoo and i just I did, did that too, tracking yeah. the whole thing on his arm it was like lifting weights and like doing all this other stuff and i'm like ah <laughs> like trying to track that what i would love to see something like that it's something different Amanda, for a demo, that's re for reach sure. out to reach out to mb because she did a few years ago a tattoo removal on Shaq. And I remember she showed me the setup and everything. So that, that, I don't know if she'll get permission to do like uh from HBO, you know, or yeah. it might not be for a while, you know, but yeah, I got to reach um, out to her for sure. There's a thing on her website that she shows about it. Okay. Oh, okay. I gotta check that website. out. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it may not be the, the breakdown, but she shows that she did it. So I'm sure Ooh. she's the queen of tattoo removals. <laughs> Man, that's cool. Does anyone else have anything else awesome they want to talk about? Um, Wash, tattoo removals, porcelain toilets, Alexa, anything? Yes, Andy. <laughs> supervised a shoot the last two days. It was my first time as a freelance on-set VFX supervisor. And uh, it was fun. It had been a while. It's been over a year since I was on set. And uh, there wasn't too much in the way of like visual effects that was needed. They just wanted someone there. Like uh, I forget who said it at the beginning of this call when I first jumped on the call, but someone to blame in case you know it didn't go right. I mean, that was my... They wanted just to be covered, but it was, it was, uh, it was great. It, it was fun to be back on set and, and then, yeah, to kind of not be there representing like a specific company that I was working for. I was hired by the production company, you know? So, um, uh, it was great. Was it local? Yeah, it was in New Jersey. And, uh, that's why the, it's all being finished in LA and it was Andy Brown who who was on one of the Logic Lives. It was like 15 things Andy Brown doesn't like about Flame or something. Um, he reached out and said uh, they they had a they're they're doing the finishing out in L.A. Shoot is in New Jersey. They were looking for somebody local, and so he called, and I I was available. Uh, and I, I actually went and saw Josh Lawrence yesterday. Like before, he it turned out it was 10 minutes from his house, so I left early. We haven't seen each other in like four years, so stopped by, said hi. And then went to set. But really funny side story. So uh, introduced myself to the ad agency, and the agency producer um, said, you know, asked me how did you get this this job, and I said, well, I'm a, a flame artist. And she goes, oh, you know, I've seen that on uh, bids that have come across my desk. I'm not really. It's always the most expensive line item. So, uh, <laughs> do you know much about flame? And I was like, <laughs> not at all. Funny, yes, <laughs> I do. I played the music, and I, I I always bring the sign with me, so I had turned the sign on, and and uh, we did a little logic lab right there. Exactly, You're right. So I did tell her though that if you ever need a flame artist in any market, join the forum, and you know, uh, and uh, you'll find the best people in the world. So nice. I don't know if I'm late to this, but I wanted to say congratulations on your award. You oh, yes. Thank you. Ahead of the call and I awesome. Forgot. You're so, here. Absolutely. Well done. Oh, Congrats. thank you. It was great. It's just wonderful to be recognized like that for doing this great stuff. So we we, we love it. We love it. So thank you. And doing. we love you. Absolutely. Oh, so congrats on that. Oh, you know. <laughs> start. Say more, please. <laughs> Well, thanks, guys. This is cool. Everyone's working on some pretty awesome stuff. Um, Amanda, what have you been working on? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, it's Super Bowl season. Some of that stuff going on. Um, just like a lot of deliverables for those commercials. Really? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> they're imagine. making up. They're making up formats. <laughs> There's new things I haven't heard about. <laughs> it's, woo, it's been fun. <laughs> 
Apple that. Watch format. <laughs> there, you know, I don't even know yeah, what some Apple of these format? numbers mean. I don't know what any of these. Oh, wait a minute. There's a new eight by sixteen that's gonna just blow. It's gonna blow everybody's mind. Right? Uh oh. MB. Wait a minute. Wait <laughs> oh, a minute. No. It's like MB. Oh my god. god. It's, it's like ringing. Ears, ears ringing. We're ring. just talking about you. You can't get what? away with talking about me behind my back. Oh, uh, no, who texted her? Who texted right her? Her? I told her. <laughs> Oh, thank I'm you, Wayne. Like, why something's not right here? And I didn't oh. do it. I didn't do it. Well, I oh. did do me. a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> you did, though. How are you? What's going on? I'm good. Just back from a little mini vacation. I needed a break after uh, hanging out with Wayne for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking about that. <laughs> Just talking about how awesome you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I jumped on and made you guys change your tune. There you go. <laughs> How's everybody doing? People need, people need your setup for, um, or some kind of tutorial for doing paint wash tattoo removal. Yes. Is what yes. the big topic was. Paint yep. wash so. tattoo removal. Okay. We're talking about using the the wash brush or using like the color, Photoshop color transfer mode. Oh, uh, I do that a lot, actually. Ooh. For a lot of things. That's what I, Wayne I, said. I, do, I don't know if I did it for the, I, you know what I did it for a lot was um, I had to put a picture in a frame off Wayne told you. And I was playing with color, trying to get the shitty looking insert, and it doesn't match any of the color space, no matter how many times you run it through. And if you even do the mats and you tweak color and you're like, it's still something's not missing, something's not right. What I'll do is I'll do a real blur of the background, right tone of the color. And then I put it in Photoshop color, or I do a wash brush if I can do a, if I can paint. Paint is best, wash paint is best. And then you can dial it in and it just kind of brings the outside color into it and puts it, it seats it a little bit better. So I think that's kind of the trick we're talking about too. But yeah, I use um, Photoshop color a lot as a math op. And I also use paint wash a lot. It just seems to take an edge off, but no big tricks there. A couple nodes. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, cool. Good oh, stuff. Well, always trying to seat things into things. So you can do all the technical things, right? And you still go, why is it just not like look right? But yeah. so there's a little tip. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for popping in here. This is great. I love that you showed up. That's nope. so cool. I haven't seen you in a while. So this is nice. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a while. So how's everybody else doing? What other things did I miss that I have to watch in the replay? It's okay. We'll just repeat it all for the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I mean, I think... I don't want to jump in, but I think uh, what Mark Wellington has been working on uh, is definitely worth, if it's not the number one thing he's worked on all year, it's definitely the number two thing that he's worked on all year. Mark is dead. Oh, oh, dead. I was I'm waiting for someone dead. to work that one. Oh, I was. <laughs> oh, you trying to think about a pun. Perfectly. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. All right. I definitely have to watch a replay now. All right. You, you win the internet for today. <laughs> Yeah, you win it well all. Done, Andy. <laughs> okay, um, I don't even know what to say. After, uh, uh, so, <laughs> here's, here's one more thing I'm working on, and I haven't talked to Wing yet, but maybe you'll see her here because I always get excited about that. I, um, my son's shown an interest in this environment and like the family business, which blew my mind. And he has a very dear friend that was dying to figure out about it, so she came over, and she's just this young talent that is ready to learn and soak it all up. And I'm just so excited to mentor somebody that I was like, my husband was like, I've seen you work on many jobs. I've never seen you this excited about work, but it's always fun to, so I'm trying to get her introduced to the community and start her off. So it's always fun to have new, new blood, if you will. <laughs> and she's female <laughs> and she's a woman of color. So we're hitting all the check box of trying to bring some diversity into this group. So it's kind of fun. Cool. Nice. So her name's Monique. So if you see her lurking around, it's me pushing the young ones to take my place because I'm getting kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> Need to pass this torch a little bit. So there you go. Nice. That's my spiel. Thanks for popping in, guys. Um, if everyone's good talking about the awesomeness they've been working on, I think I want to give away some prizes. You guys go with that. Let's oh, I better it. win all of them since I just bought <laughs> I did just add your name. You came in right at the right time. <laughs> so it's amazing how that worked out. Yeah. Okay. There, yeah. So here we go. Ready? <laughs> Everyone's here. Everyone that registered is here, but of course, spinning the wheel, you have to be present to win. First one is for a t-shirt.
Should we do this again? You have to be present to win, right? Let's see here. Da, da, da. Going through. Okay, one more time. Ready? See, NB added you right there. You know, I just thought about this. I was like, you know, I should have went through and just put the names of the people that were in. That would have made a lot more sense. But you know, we're gonna try it three more times. <laughs> <laughs> these people. Okay, you know what? <laughs> who are these people? Who are these people? <laughs> who are these people? <laughs> I don't know who these people are. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a winner. Just go, just go Oprah. Everyone gets a t-shirt. Everyone gets a t-shirt. <laughs> and I have a second logic the... t-shirt now. Yes, <laughs> the one year of back. <laughs> Are these people here? Yes. <laughs> okay. See, this worked out better than expected. Guys, thank you so much. We're going to head on over to, um, what's it called? The slideshow. And we're going to show you some good stuff. Yeah, so thank you so much, guys. So stick around for a little bit. And we're going to go through, through some awesome smads. So guess what? Upcoming on Logic Live, we've got Sunday, February 5th, Publishing Workflow Improvements with Josh Lawrence. Speaking of Josh Lawrence, hosted by Jeff Kyle. And then Sunday, February 12th, Flame Artist Mark LaRue. This is what I was talking about with the 3D Roto awesomeness. Yeah. Oh, these are both going to be really, really good. If you haven't signed up for the forum, head on over and do so at forum.logic.tv. It's daily conversations, Q&A, and just general stuff related to Flame. If you're there, click on the link to sign up for Discord where we're having more of our informal chats and hangouts. It's a great place to be. This episode of Logic Live is going to join all the other episodes of Logic Live online later today. And uh, we're going to have a whole bunch more podcasts coming out soon. If you haven't already, you can check out the latest podcast. It's number 33 with Mark LaRue. Uh, Glenn Teal interviews Mark, and you can find these on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere podcasts are available. Check this out. Uh, we have, uh, let's see here, Logic Live, what? 1.67K subscribers. This is amazing. I love it. You guys are great. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to support what we're doing at Logic, please become a patron by going over to patreon.com slash Logic TV. And check out the merch shop. As Jeff would say, swag yourself out. A big thank you to Boris Effects for sponsoring Logic Live. And if you'd like to save 50% on everything they make, you can use the new Logic code, uh, Logic-2022. Yep, still 22, uh, at checkout. Thank you to AJA for also sponsoring Logic Live. They've been together since Flame since 2006. And we would also like to thank our friends at Hot Spring, the newest sponsor of Logic Live. They're the future of VFX outsourcing connecting you to other artists around the world to help you get your projects done. You can find them at thehotspring.com. And that's going to do it for today, folks. <laughs> Thank you to everyone. Thanks for uh, just chatting about all sorts of fun stuff. And thank you to the Logic community. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you yeah, guys so thanks. much for Great everything. Job. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. We'll see you again Thank soon. You, see you, Wayne. See you soon. Hey, everybody. All right, Everybody. bye guys.